Yo, 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 what's up, ladies and gentlemen? It's your boy, Double B Babble, the franchise player. Joining here live once again on the Roundtable Pro Wrestling Podcast. And man, today we got a very special, exclusive interview with my man here. Look, Brian Brian Waters, man, he runs this great wrestling YouTube channel called Russell Realm. Go check it out, youtube.com backslash Russell Realm. This dude, man, has been in the game 10 long years, doing it long and strong, man. We're talking about, talking about everything under the sun when it comes to professional wrestling. Let's bring this gentleman in right now. Brian, welcome to the Roundtable Pro Wrestling Podcast. What's going on, man? How you feeling? Oh, man, it's another wonderful day, man. You know, I woke up this morning. You know, it's all good, man. How are you? Tell us about yourself. I'm good, man. You know, excited to be here. I appreciate the invite. You know, I'm a huge wrestling fan. Uh, been one literally since birth. Uh, my mother will tell you straight up that she knew I was going to be a boy because um, when she was pregnant, every time wrestler came on, I, I started kicking. So, um, <laughs> so you know, in the boots. <laughs> yeah, in college, um, I, before college, I had a show. It was with my cousin. But then after that kind of, um, you know, straight up, he got in trouble. Uh, I was doing like little stuff, you know, just for my, a, a YouTube, the, the previous YouTube channel. And that's when I met my co-host, Dwayne, that you can probably see in the back poster. Uh, shout out to him who does all the graphics, the T-shirts and all the stuff. So um, we met and then, you know, started talking wrestling. I said, hey, man, you know, he checked out the show. And he said, like, it was the type of conversations he, you know, liked it. Uh, watch and i was like man we gotta do a show together and he agreed and the rest is history so you know um it originally started off as a way for us to one talk wrestling because we both loved it uh mm -hmm. we we made it cool i'll say at morgan state university people who love wrestling at one point would come to us like oh yeah well i remember when this happened i remember when that happened and then what happened was um during that time we was taking TV production classes. So we're not just, you know, people who like wrestling that just started a show. No, nah, we were taking production classes. So we paid attention to the production, which was limited at the time. You know, uh, obviously, 10 years later, a lot of the stuff is more affordable. Oh, yeah. And that's when, you know, we just been doing it. And then, you know, we kind of had a little bit of uh, hiccups, I should say, you know, just life, nothing, you know, no issues. But we didn't have all the time. You know, I got married, had two kids. He, you know, doing his thing, coaching, and he has a family. So a lot of times now we have to be more strategic, like, OK, we got to we might record four shows and we might not be able to record another four till a month later, where before we could get together every week and like, OK, cool. You got class. You got to work. No, cool. Let's do a show. So, you know, that's been, uh, <laughs> It's kind I know of how that struggle. I know that struggle so much. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I tell you, like for us, we run, we, we do our podcast every week live on Wednesday nights. Um, <clears throat> we do it on Spotify. We do it. On, I mean, we do it on um, Twitch. We do it on YouTube and we do it on Facebook. So we do it live every week, you know. Um, and we you know we have, you know, three, four, five segments of guests. But there are times where it's like, oh, man, like, it's Wednesday. Oh my God, we got a show today. And I totally forget. Or, you know, like, 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 like today, like, Hey, I got an interview tonight. Oh man, I totally forgot that it was Wednesday. You know? So it's like, yeah, trust me. We, life does happen. And when life happens, it happens in the biggest ways. Yeah. I always say shout out to my wife. Cause she, you know, understands the passion. Uh, she'll say, you got a show tonight. I'm like, no, it's Tuesday or it's, you know, um, cause at one point I was doing my shows on Wednesdays after, you know, mm -hmm. wrestling went off and now uh, um, we're in the process where we're looking you know uh Dwayne's finishing up some projects so we you know we did a show um Sunday night or I should say Monday morning really uh it was like one o'clock when we recorded it in the morning and that was to you know go over the WWE fast lane and the week before we did our test pilot and that was the night of daylight savings time. So we've uh, <laughs> found ways to make it work remotely, but we still got to find ways to make it work remotely without uh, burning ourselves out or burning exactly. on both ends. But we, you know, I'm excited to have um, the wrestling realm now podcast, which is available everywhere um, where we will be talking about, you know, things on a weekly basis. Um, a lot of stuff on our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash the wrestling realm um, is, timely i mean timeless so we've talked about stuff such as 
has Vince McMahon lost, uh, has he lost a step? We've talked about things. We did top five WWE champions way back in the day. You know, we also did a show on some of the bounties in professional wrestling. And mind you, a lot of that stuff is even old. And we got the channel organized. You can go to season one, season two. And we also like to do uh, silly skits. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, um, we like that too. We do we do games sometimes with the guests oh, oh. on here. Like we'll do one with you tonight, as a matter of fact. Okay. <laughs> But yeah, I totally understand it. I love it, man. I, I love the fact that you have such enthusiasm and that you're, you know, you're hundred percent ready to, uh, you know, do, do the most. You know what I mean? I love that. I love it so much that you have that, that passion and that drive. Um, not a lot of people in this industry have that passion and that drive, man. And it's so awesome that you do like you're, you guys, I've, I've, I've you know, I've kind of like checked you guys out a little bit and I know that you guys are like, I see you on YouTube. I see you on Twitter. I see you on Instagram. I see you on, you know, you guys are promoting your brand. You guys got some awesome t-shirts, by the way. I want one of those uh, extra large sent to your boy here. Um, let's talk about, you know what? You know, I'm gonna do this with you. I'm gonna do this with you. Since you are a wrestling aficionado, I mean, I see you got the cool championship belts, and the, <laughs> you know, behind you. And I always pay homage to you. Somebody who does this goes in the ring. Anybody who uh, on my shoot job would tell you they're not allowed to use the F word around me. Um, they don't have the license to do it. I don't have the license. I'm a fan. I always make sure I'm a fan first. I look at it from an intelligent perspective. I've been watching this long enough. So a lot of times people get mad. I'm like, at the end of the day, it's wrestling, right? It's entertainment. Mm -hmm. It's a show. But the people who go out there and risk their lives every time they step foot in the ring, in the square circle between the ropes or backstage you, you're risking your life so i always make sure i let people know don't use that word around me and appreciate the workers you know ladies and gentlemen the word the f word he's talking about is not fuck <laughs> <laughs> it's not fuck we use that word on this podcast a whole lot it's <laughs> fake and we in this industry we hate that word and i will tell you why we hate that word Wrestling, and I, I, I tell people this all the time, 28 years in this business, I've broken a lot of bones and I've hurt myself a lot. I tell people, wrestling is a male-based soap opera and we're very physical. Mm -hmm. They say, what do you mean by that? We tell a story with physicality. Simple as that. You know, would you say football is fake? Would you say basketball is fake? Would you say hockey is fake? Mm -hmm. Oh no, you wouldn't because those guys are getting hit. Well, guess what? So are we. And to top it all off, I look at it like this. I've wrestled with a broken heel six months. Didn't know it was broken. Yep. A professional football player. Oh, man, I stubbed my toe. I need to be out for a couple of weeks. I look at that. I'm like, hold my beer. <laughs> you know, that's nothing. So I appreciate you appreciating what we do in the ring, behind the scenes. Because tr trust me, ladies and gentlemen, it is not an easy job. It is not an easy job to do. But we do it for you guys. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And that's why I say, you know, I appreciate it. You know, I make sure like, um, you know, sometimes I've taken my son to shows and I I'll never forget. Um, it was a gentleman, Bobby Ocean and Keith Mack. Keith Mack and I used to work together. And so, you know, he invited, he's a wrestler as well. So I was like, of course, I'm gonna go to the show. And I took my son, my son, like, you know, kind of like fell in love with him immediately. Same with uh, Bobby Ocean. And when Bobby lost and my son was like five at the time, he's like started four or five. He started crying. I was like, oh, wait a minute. Oh, no. So I had to have that conversation with him. No, look, it is a script. It is predetermined. But don't look at it in a way where you're trying to constantly predict it because mm -hmm. then you want to take the fun out of it. I said, it's just like it's, at the end of the day, it's a television show. Right. I mean, you can make the argument that we don't at the end of the day, we a lot of us don't know whether or not the NFL is scripted. Tom Brady leaves and goes to Tampa Bay, wins the Super Bowl. I mean, to me, that looked like a great booking right there. Dude, dude, I can tell you right now, that was the best booking job ever because that's the first time a team has been to the Super Bowl and won the Super Bowl in their own stadium yep. with a new quarterback that has won five Super Bowls somewhere else and just came. Man, that is the best booking job ever. Mm -hmm. And, you know, people talk about sports being – being uh being real well let's look at it like this man remember when 
was it Eli Manning? Was, was, was going to retire? Eaton? Yeah, major Super Bowl, right? Mm-hmm. Now, let's also talk about, remember the World Trade Center incident that happened? You know, everything, was, the world was rallying around New York. Who won the World Series that year? Well, the, the Yankees, Yankees. They lost. <laughs> Hold on, the Yankees lost, right? But they were the biggest heels at the time because they oh, won yeah, yeah. great. So, but they did get there. But however, who came up in NFL? The Patriots. I don't know where. Exactly. Now, also, think about this. Think about this. Remember the big Hurricane Katrina totally destroyed all the New Orleans? Mm-hmm. Just what happens to Saints went to the Super Bowl that year. <laughs> Just saying, man. Just saying, you know. You know, um, for the first time in the history of sports, the NFL, I mean, the NBA and the Major League Baseball both had world champions in Los Angeles for the first time ever at the same time. Come mm-hmm. on, man. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> let's just call it what it is, okay? <laughs> yep. Sports are inter- sports are just entertainment for all of us, and we appreciate you guys coming out and watching us weekly. I appreciate you, um, you know, doing a podcast and and talking about the sport because that that's what makes this sport so great. The fans, yeah, everyone has an opinion. Like there's a there's an AEW side, then there's a WWE side. Which is better? Who you know? Honestly, man. I know guys that work in both promotions and they can give two craps. <laughs> They're like, it's money. We're making money. We're doing our business. Exactly. That. But yeah. Uh, so before we get any further into this, man, let's, let me do this. Let me go ahead and pay some bills real quick. Let me get to our commercial breaks and we'll be right back more with Brian Waters and Wrestle Realm. get your hair cut you go get your hair cut right you head down to big d's barbershop big d's barbershop vancouver washington's best and brightest 1019 main street vancouver washington where you can go get your hair lined up cuts fades shampoos conditions and all the great things that go with supporting a local barbershop in a local business area you can also reach them online at www.bigdsbarbershop.com Go get your haircut right. These are more than just the sounds of a safe place to go after school. These are the sounds of interest being ignited and of mentors making an impact. At Boys and Girls Clubs, we don't do just one thing. We do whatever it takes to meet the needs of every kid who comes through those doors. Because whatever it takes is what it takes to build great futures. Great futures start here. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Great futures do start at the Boys and Girls Club. And I am back here with Brian Waters. Brian, let's talk about professional wrestling. Let's talk about the Raw versus SmackDown, the AEW versus WWE, the return of NWA. Let's. Let's just get into it, man. All right. So what are your thoughts on the firing of Dave Marquez from the NWA? Um, To be honest, which I am not as I haven't read up on it too much. But so, you know, you might have to enlighten me on what's going on on that one. <laughs> um, you know, I know that um, I didn't get a chance to catch the pay-per-view, but. I know there was some things going on as far as somebody was in trouble backstage or whatever. Um, so unfortunately, there's always a dark side of the ring in wrestling. <laughs> That's funny you mentioned that. <laughs> well, I mean, there's a lot of stuff going on with that. Well, let, let's talk about something you may you may have heard about. 
My bad. <laughs> Let's talk about Andrea Sin Alma. Yeah. Leaving the WWE. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now he asked for his release like God, like two, three weeks ago. Yeah. The WWE wouldn't let him go. So now, right as the pay-per-view is in full swing, you get a future endeavors text. I mean, tweet from the WWE. Now, I think he's an amazing talent, just not used right. What are your thoughts? I'm going to be 100% honest with you. Oh, looks like you're muted. It looks like you're muted. Yeah, I, I knew he was in trouble the moment Angel Garza showed up next to him. <laughs> Garza uh, has so much charisma, and I felt Andrade wasn't keeping up. And I looking at Monday Night Raw, it's about the entertainment, right? Where NXT has always been about the wrestling. And then, you know, if you get the entertainment, it's a bonus, to be honest with you. Like stuff the Undisputed Era is doing, uh, even Finn Balor down there is like, okay, man, this is amazing. Mm -hmm. But there's no denying in ring, I mean, flawless, right? You know, uh, but even with Selena Vega there, I said, okay, if it was just them two, it would have been fine. But I think once you added somebody else to the mix, it's kind of like, oh, wait a minute. Well, that that actually might look better, you know. <laughs> it would work. Somebody, um, a cheeseburger from McDonald's, but then here comes uh, Ray Robin. They might say like, "Wait, well, that burger was good to me, but this one's actually better and it's bigger." So that moment, that's when I knew. I said, "Oh uh, yeah, he's because he was he was ha he has so much more charisma and." He was entertaining. Now the pandemic happened. So unfortunately, a lot of stuff, maybe Andrade could have built off of that. Maybe could have bounced back. Who knows? It's just unfortunate, you know, no fans. That's a curveball. And it's a lot that's going on with. I mean, it's a lot they have to overcome. But I, that's the way I always felt. Um, I want to see what's going to happen. You know, he's betting on himself. I would love to see him be successful. But we said this on the realm. It's not too many people that you, the, the numbers are less than more than people that have left the WWE and become a bigger name in situations where they felt they where they better on themselves. You know, I can understand that. I will tell you this, though. Mm -hmm. I will tell you this. The WWE really screwed the pooch when he let him go, because guess what? He doesn't have a 90 day compete clause. He legit can start. He can, he legit can show up at at Ring of Honor. He can show up at AAA. He can show up at AEW like tomorrow. You know who benefits from that though? The fans. Yes. <laughs> and the fans also, are gonna get to see it. you know, for him, it also works out because he's coming off with Buzz because his name is you know relevant, right? So and now he the he has a fastball thrown his way. He's got to knock this out of the park. If he's saying he wants to wrestle and he wants to do something, he's got to knock this out of the park. Like we saw with Thea Trinidad, when she left, the only thing she could do was go on Twitch. And that first Twitch she did had her most views. That's but right. at 90 Day Claws, and you know, maybe she doesn't want to go back into wrestling right now. We all know she's heavy in the gaming for obvious reasons. So, but you know, you get that initial, I just left the WWE buzz. How will he be able to capitalize? That's what I'm interested in to see. But at the end of the day, the fans benefit from him not having that 90-day clause. And I don't think WWE is worried about it. Not that, you know, I mean, it, it, uh, the 90-day compete clause, no compete clause, I, I, I understand it from a business standpoint. Don't mean I like it. Don't have to like it. But um, I, it's not like. I don't see him moving the needle. You know, he's not going to be, it's not like Randy Orton or John Cena leaving. Yeah. You know what I mean? He's not going to take business from a uh, WWE and just say, go to AEW and all of a sudden make them have, you know, crush NXT in the ratings for the remaining time. That's my opinion. No, well, you know, I, I totally get that. I totally get that. <clears throat> and here's the thing. When you got guys like Andre Sinama and you got guys like Christian Cage and you got guys like Sting, 
Miro, and those guys go. Here's the thing with me. Like a lot of a lot of people were saying things like, Oh man, Christian went to a WWE. I mean he went to AEW. Oh, that's just like that's WCW or Impact Wrestling all over again. So the old people go. But remember when he showed up two weeks earlier in the rumble, everyone was like, Oh my god, Christian's back. Oh my god, he's in the best condition of his life. You know, that's the divide that, that kind of destroys wrestling, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Because you got one person bashing everything that AEW does. They'll never make it over a million viewers. They'll never do this. They'll never do that. But NXT is getting smashed every week in the ratings. You know, you know and, 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 Raw has a horrible product every week. Uh, <laughs> I disagree. I think well, Raw is too long. Three hours really is too long. Yeah, I just, my problem with that is that they the the WWE can't tell stories like they can't they, they don't they don't know how to run a story for more than three weeks at a time because they're trying to jam pack everything into three hours what are your thoughts on that I, I think it's too much um I think maybe it's too much talent uh without a proper cycle and what I mean cycle right so Charlotte Flair's unfortunately homesick with COVID right mm-hmm Imagine if there was some sort of off season, but the rotation was in a way that you would miss the wrestlers, but not miss them. Now, granted, you're going to have like these long title reigns, right? So let's just say Bailey. Then all of a sudden, like now, like Bailey had her run last year. Now would be the time. I know she's on SmackDown, but now would be the time for her off season. But it would be done in a way that you don't miss her because you got Sasha and Bianca holding it down um, on the main event side. Then you got Nia and Shayna who can work with the other ladies on SmackDown. Just using that as an example. Um, but, you know, I, watching Fastlane, I, I enjoyed the matches, you know, with Drew and uh, Sheamus, who I don't really enjoy too many of Sheamus matches. But you had two guys who grew up together and, you know, one, you know, fighting for respect because, you know, and uh, they really like two uh bulls beating the heck out of each other right so then you also had on you know riddle and um retribution which i was disappointed did not see in retribution overall maybe i missed it but um you know you had that right there you know those guys going at it in the ring and then you have retribution finally splitting up so i just think raw is just too long you know when it was two hours it was must see tv and you realize how because Raw is three hours, you see with SmackDown being two hours how fast it goes, but mm-hmm. how they're able to get everything in there. And I just think the roster is too big at the end of the day. It's like, okay, you're signing all these wrestlers, and I'm happy for people to be able to get paychecks. I'm happy for people to be able to accomplish their dreams. But if you're not cycling them in a way to keep them fresh, what are you doing? I mean, just look at the NBA right now. You have quite a few major injuries because. They didn't have an extensive the the normal offseason. So the face of the French, the face of the league, LeBron James is out. Kevin Durant, I think he's still out. Anthony Davis is out. You have all these injuries. I think Giannis sat down because you didn't cycle. And then you got the rookie, uh, the potential rookie of the year out because you didn't have that ample offseason. Now wrestling is putting their bo- wrestlers put their body on the line way more. What people may not realize, they way more because, like you said earlier, you know, you out there wrestling with a broken, you, you could be wrestling with a, you know, a, a broken toe or whatever, and you're doing it every day, no off season. So I think that's the thing. If an off season could be implemented, and that's the stuff with me, my beef with AEW, um, because I'm always gonna watch it because it's wrestling, right? And I like the wrestlers over there. One, I just get annoyed when you have the trolling of the WWE. It's like, come on, y'all, focus on your own stuff, right? I it's agree funny with that. sometimes, but after a while, it gets excessive. Like when Cody first threw the thing at the throne, I thought that was awesome because we all knew how he felt. But it's been what two, three years later, like, okay, let's rev it down. Um, but that and then the fact is, I thought, and this is going to get um not too political, but I thought we were going to get wrestlers with health insurance. I thought we was going to get more diversity. Um, I thought we was going to get, um, you know, just more chances to see other wrestlers. 
Cody goes on a show or no, he goes on Twitter and mentions Chris Bay's name and doesn't sign him, right? You got Scorpio Sky who look like you're finally doing something with him, but everybody, you know, what are you doing with your black wrestlers? You know, what are you doing with your black women's wrestlers? You got Big Swole over there. Yeah, you got a star in Jay Cargill. So I'm interested to see where they go with her. You know, I feel like they're trying to force the Joshi wrestlers down our throat where it's a reason that I'll just say Vince McMahon does things the way he does, you know, um, and it's because you're at, um, responding to advertisers and sponsors. So, like, I feel like, you know, it's like, oh, yeah, we want to show you case these wrestlers, but you're not giving them the time. You're not giving the quality that you promised. And, and and I'm looking at, like, my eyes on, like, Brandy Rose. I'm like, hello, you, you know, <laughs> you, 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 y'all practice equality. What about the brothers and sisters out there that work behind the scenes that deserve an opportunity? Now, I completely understand that. <clears throat> Being a person of color, I completely understand that. I can tell you this. I can I I can make you the I I, I can predict what's going to happen at WrestleMania. <clears throat> Drew's going to win the title from Bobby Lashley because Vince wanted Drew to win the title in front of fans. Mm -hmm. So Bobby being the first black WWE champion was just a Black History Month thing. He's going to drop the belt just like the rest, just like the other two members of the Hurt Business drop the belts. And the New Day is going to drop the belts. And the whole biggie, they really screwed the pooch when they did this whole screw up finish on the pay per view um, on, Sun, on last night. The whole, oh, my shoulder was down. His shoulder was down. Oh, no, no. They screwed that up. We all know that the Intercontinental title is the Black World Championship in the WWE. Let's call it what it is. Mm -hmm. So Vince is doing no better than Tony Khan. The only difference between AEW and WWE is one: AEW does stories that, that they do long term long term stories. No, Vince but gets Vince gets bored. I don't want to do that anymore. Just like uh, Raw Underground. You know what? That was good for three weeks. I don't want to do that anymore. You know, like, and then they they treat people like they treat fans like, okay, you guys are stupid. You guys, are, you guys won't remember this next week. You know, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the whole Mia Yam and Retribution. They put them on a stupid mask. Like, oh, you're not gonna remember. Who, you're not gonna know who these people are. Their masks are falling off and shit. You know, totally embarrassing them. AEW, AEW brings out trans wrestlers, they bring out gay wrestlers, they bring out um, people of color, young guys, and they're showcasing them, but not giving them enough to be relevant. Does that well, make see, sense? No, I understand what you're saying, but see, like, here's my, so, we all know what the WWE is, right? Mm -hmm. Let's know what it is. Um, I know some people say once Vince is gone it'll be better some people say they it won't who knows i'm not in the i, I don't wish that for people i put it like that right <laughs> uh, i i noticed like with wwe one of the things is we've been watching wrestling long enough so a lot of times when stuff is predictable i don't really get upset i just take it for what it is i've been mm -hmm. watching this for 34 years so i'm going to see things coming and it also helps. I have a 11 and a six year old and they're not as invested as I am. But around WrestleMania, they sitting down here, they watching the show with me. I look at their reactions, right? Going to the shows, I see the kids reactions. And that's always been like it's always been catered to kids. Mm -hmm. Um. So but then I look at with AEW. My thing is, I thought you was going to be give me something different. You know what I mean? Like, even with Matt Hardy, that didn't stick. You know, we we don't, this woken character, you know, but then we say, okay, well, maybe the pandemic, that would prevent it. It's unfortunate that we lost Brody Lee, because who knows what the Dark Order would have been. Um, mm -hmm. I, you know, I felt they could have really had 
really had a good run with Big Swole and Britt Baker and showcased that and with the women's championship. But I'm not sure if injuries played a part or what, but it's just it got away from us, right? Um, Nala Rose should have won the championship in D.C. She was home, for goodness sakes, at the first AEW show. I was there. The crowd was hot for it. But it felt like, okay, y'all know who she is. We got to get Rio over. And it's like, all right, I I, I kind of understand that, but like, come on, you know? So um, that's the things that like just annoy me with mm -hmm. uh, W. So, but I'm interested to see this because one of the things I've been big on, I've been saying this from time and time again, I really wish Cody never gave himself that stipulation because to me, he's yeah. into the company and he needs to be in that world championship picture. You well, know, I understand why he did that. And I'll tell you, I run a company. Mm -hmm. And I have yet to become the heavyweight champion of the company. But now, now real quick, real quick, though, because this is my thing. It, it, I've, I've said this during the press conference. I, I, I can I, I respect them for doing this. But as a fan and I'm just putting on my fan hat, mm -hmm. it's none of my business. Who is the executive vice president? Right. I, yeah, I, yep, I, I understand that. Present this on TV, you know, because I wanted to see the Bucks win the tag team championships. Now. This is where I say, hmm, you guys obviously know what you're doing because I was like, man, they should have been tag team champions. But mm -hmm. seeing that over the course of time, I was like, that worked, right? Kenny Omega, I wanted to see him in a prominent spot. Clearly, uh, Jory's still out on this one. But, you know, with Cody, I, I wanted to see Cody in bigger matches. But I, I And I would give respect him not trying to make it about him. I I totally respect that but for goodness sakes cody rose is the face of the company and he's the guy <laughs> i like him and, and, and I'm, I'm gonna admit this i and my friends will say whatever i'm a wwe guy right it's the it's the company <clears throat> I'm watching. it's what i have family memories with but i like cody rhodes way better now than i ever did like him in wwe that's why i would like to see him in the main event him and omega going at it for the championships i think cody's character is shining more now because he doesn't have restrictions mm -hmm. no one is holding him down yep. he's able to just go out there and be like hey man look i'm fucking cody rhodes and um i'm one of the best wrestlers in the world That's i'm a, i'm a great promo and i'm a perennial baby face people are going to love me because i'm my son i'm my dad's son you know he he really is the new incarnation even Nikita Koloff, I had Nikita Koloff on, on my podcast, said the same thing. Yeah. She said, Cody Rhodes is the new Dusty Rhodes. And you imagine he's got it all. the TNT advertisers. Mm -hmm. Just taking this a step further, right? Because, you know, with the wrestling realm, we call ourselves the show of superior wrestling intellect. Obviously, you have this intellectual, you know, we're having a great conversation, and that's why mm -hmm. I appreciate you inviting me on. Imagine taking Cody Rhodes and presenting him He's already been in a program with Shaq, right? You imagine him showing up with that gorgeous championship. I see, you know, clearly your belt guy, those are yours. Um, you know, him showing up on inside the NBA with that championship. It's little stuff. Like, that's the reason, like, I want to see more Cody, you know, him showing up with his wife, with his beautiful wife mm -hmm. on inside the NBA promoting AEW. You know, if I'm if I'm Let's just say I'm an, an average, um, you know, somebody on TNT. I'm like, yeah, get me on here. Let's get Cody seats at a game. So with the title, him and his wife, and we can promote the heck out of them. That's going to make, you know, people who don't watch wrestling go like, whoa, well, who's that guy? I want to see him. And, and who's that? Uh, you know, I will tell you, I've been a professional wrestler 28 years. I, like I said, I worked for both major organizations at one time. And I will tell you right now. The bad bunny thing irritated the fuck out of me, but it was a stroke of genius mm -hmm. because the guy came in, wins the 24 7 title, the joke title of the WWE. Let's call it what it is. He wins the 24 7 title and then goes to the fucking Grammys with the belt. <laughs> That's like, I like our truth. Great marketing. Powers. Because that title isn't what it is. And taking what Dwayne said on the show the other night. That title isn't what it is without our truth. Like you said, it's supposed mm -hmm. to be a joke, right? I mean, just look at it. Look at the way it looks. It's just like they just, 
you know. But he went out there and took something that was crap and he made it into sugar. And now, you know, for the longest time, that was the funniest stuff. You know, him going on uh, Fox, ML, you know, people going on the MLB shows, NFL shows, because they was like, all right, man, oh, snap. You know, you're glued to your social media because you never know when it could change hands. Yeah. You know? Smart. That, that's smart. See, and, and that's what I try to tell people all the time. That's smart branding, smart business. You give you give you give something like that to someone that's going to be a social media magnet. Mm-hmm. It puts more eyes on your product, and that's how you do it. That's yep. like like that's why I want to have you on on here today. I'm like you know let's put more eyes on his product. Yeah, you know, put more eyes on our product. A collaboration. That's what makes this business work. Mm-hmm. You know, in any any business, you know, any 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 industry in the world. That's what makes it work. And, and, and you can learn from each other. You know, exactly. Um, a lot of times, <laughs> wrestler fans, we. We tend to get into these heated discussions online and next thing you know, people get like really upset. Um, But it's, it's one of those things like, look, you know, you can just have a conversation. This how, like I said, this how me and Dwayne got started. There would be days at, we would start talking on the corner outside of the school at 2 PM. People would be on or 2 50. People be running the class Mm -hmm. and then they would come back outside. And I'm like, wait, y'all still out here? Like, yeah, because we were just talking wrestling. Both of us, like, huge wrestling fans. And we always said, like, the show never stopped. It's just that we stopped hitting the record button for a while. But we, you know, I mean, for goodness sake, he's my daughter's godfather. And so he's all, we talk every day. It's just Mm -hmm. that, you know, it's like, all right, we just, we're allowing the world in on these conversations that we're having. And we get to practice doing what we love is producing television. You know, that's a great thing, man. When we started this podcast, me and my partner, we just said, hey, you know what? Let's just have fun. Let's just talk about what we know. And what we know happens to be professional wrestling. So yep. talking about the sport, talking about what's going on in the sport, getting feedback from people in our chat group, in our comments, getting feedback from people who watch our television show, who listen to us on Spotify, Google, Anchor, you know, listen to us on Pandora, iHeartRadio, listening to us on on you know, uh, Amazon Music now, like just all these cool places, Radio Public, you know, YouTube, Twitch, Facebook, all these social media you know, outlets, everyone is watching us. Yeah. And they're learning and they're having conversations and we're getting to know, like people are learning more about the business and that's awesome. And to have someone like you aboard that kind of, you know, you know what we're talking about, you understand it, you, you dig it, you know, mm-hmm. you're spreading the word, I'm spreading the word. And you know, like you said, people can have intelligent conversations. And that's the best part about this business. Like it brings, you know, wrestling is the only sport that brings people together. Oh, yeah, certainly. Like, legitly brings people together. And we don't have an off. We don't have an off season. You know, the NFL has an off season, NBA, Major League Baseball, hockey, soccer, FIFA, whatever. They all have off seasons. Wrestling doesn't. But my mother said when um she was taking me, I like I was like two years old for a checkup. And you know, you the kids, you know, you're in the doctor's office, they sit there, they got the toys. Mm-hmm. And I just there was a little boy, and I was sitting there who was, you know, playing with the trucks, and I looked at him and said, You like you like wrestling? And he said, Yeah. And she said, and then we just kept playing. She said she always thought that if I said if he said no, I would have got up and walked away, <laughs> you know. <laughs> like it's something for me. Like I, I'm one of them fans that go to the shows, you know, I wear the, the gear, I'll take a belt and I see a little kid come up and be like, can I hold your belt? Can I take a picture with it? Absolutely. You know, and, and to see the parents reaction, like, wow, you know, thank you so much. You know, it's, and, and it, it makes their day, you know what I mean? And it's, it's, and that's the reason why, like a lot of like, when something happens, I just, I won't, I don't, I'm like, look, I'm not going to go on and rant and crazy, you know, it's something I don't like. I'm just like, all right, I'm not watching this, you know. Um, the, I think the last time I really got upset, um, you may figure it out, was the night Kofi lost the title. Yeah, <laughs> that was bullshit. Yeah, I, 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 <laughs> if, if, if I, I felt like all of black wrestling fans, media just screamed to the top of their lungs at once. You know, and it, and if if every if Vince McMahon would have been 
like in front of everybody, somebody would have threw some soda at him mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, or, or beer. But that was like, you know, but generally when something goes, I'm like, you know what? All right. I don't feel like it. I'm, I'm turning this off. I, it's just not for me, you know, because at the end of the day, it's not that serious. It's a show, <laughs> you know? Well, I'll tell you, man. And that's just it. See, you say that. You say that now. It's just a show. But some people, mm-hmm. this is life, man. This is their life. Look, I was wrestling in Indiana one time, and I'm a heel. I'm a bad guy, ladies and gentlemen. I do bad shit in the ring. <laughs> it's all fine games. Hey, hey, what I'm speaking is, I'm speaking as far as the fans getting upset. Not- oh, oh, no, no, no. Yeah, I'm going to tell you about, this is about a fan. Okay. So I, I was doing, a, I was doing my gimmick, you know, and I got the fans riled up. That's what I do. <laughs> and this is like a two night back to back show. So I beat this guy up really bad. This little girl was crying in the front row. And she has a sign. And I walk up and I rip the sign, throw it on the ground, stomp on it, right? And I'm doing like a comedy stomp, like stomping both feet, jump up and down. And you know, I tell her, just shut your mouth. And every time you open your mouth, I'm going to punch this guy. So she starts screaming. I punch the guy again and punch the guy again, right? So I cheat to win. And I look right at the little girl. And I say, I'm beating him because of you. And she starts screaming at me, right? So the mom, you know, she's like, F you, F you. And I'm like, you wish you could. You wish you could, right? <laughs> so the next night, I see them again. Mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, man, it's on. <laughs> so I run, I run up. I go out there, and I'm beating the guy up, beating the guy up, beating the guy up, beating the guy up. And I see the little girl again. And I go over. She has a water bottle in her hand. I slap the water bottle out of her hand. And she starts crying. I look at her and I'm like, go ahead and cry because every time you cry, all your tears are going to be punches to this guy's face. And I'm punching this guy. And I'm just punching this guy. We go up on the stairs and I throw him down the stairs right in front of her, right? Eat seeker. <laughs> man, man I, was try- I was trying, bro. Curb stomp him right in front of the little girl. Throw him in the ring. Put my feet on the ropes with a pin. After the match is over, I go over to the girl and her mom. And I'm like, you suck just like this stupid state sucks, right? So I go on the back. This is like the semi main event of the show. Uh huh. So I'm in the back, and one of the guys I'm working with was like, "Man, I'm gonna go smoke a cigarette. Come outside with me." So we go outside. We're talking, and out of nowhere, I hear, "You son of a bitch!" And I turn around, and she walks across the parking lot and maces me, just straight up, just wow, all in my face. I'm like, "Oh my god!" <laughs> and I cover my face, and it's like getting it's everywhere. Now I don't know if you've ever been to Indiana before, but from nah. Indiana to Kentucky is a good two uh, two and a half three hour drive. Uh huh. I'm driving from Indianapolis, Indiana to Louisville, Kentucky on fire. Wow. Right. So I totally get like fans like in this, and I comes to find out that this lady is the mayor, the was the police chief, no, the mayor's wife of the town. Mm. Right. So point of the, the point of that is, fans believe it. Fans buy into it. It's their lively. It's their life. Like these fans, they take it so seriously, mm-hmm. and it's like do or die with some of these fans. So I mean, talking about being serious and being like some fans take it to the next level. So I totally get what you're saying about that. Yeah, that's crazy, man. Wow, that's wow. I don't even know what to say. <laughs> It was interesting, man. It was I, interesting. I, I remember, uh, shout out to my friend, uh, Amber Rodriguez. Uh, the last wrestling show was, um, oh, I know Amber, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that's that's a little, little sister right there. She, um, I went to see her elevate pro. I happened to mm-hmm. be in New Orleans that weekend for work, it was the day before Kobe died, and my manager, um, uh, so I work in, um, hospital communications and my manager and i had to go to a um a conference and you know i said hey my friend got us uh you know ringside seats you want to go she's like all right cool so we, the person she was sitting next to was um uncle was wrestling and was getting beat up and she saw him cry and my manager thought this was the funniest thing in the world because <laughs> she would always tell me Oh, this stuff is fake, and this uh, tell her, you know. And so she even like posted a picture, and Brian said, "I can't call it fake," you know, posted on Instagram. But it was funny for her to see all that. She was like, "You know what? This was fun," you know. And I said, "Yeah, it's always fun when you see like the crowd interacting," you know. But obviously, you know, I've never seen nothing get that serious. I'm sorry that happened, but you know, it's 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 wrestling is a beautiful sport, and it's a beautiful, you know, it's just 
I mean, it has its, you know, negatives, obviously, but you know, I, I'm it's something that I'm glad that, you know, my parents introduced me to and my grandfather and my uncle and, you know, that I continue to stay with as far as, you know, watching and creating content around it. And there's so much content you can create around it. And look, before I let you go, man, I want to go ahead and do this. So mm-hmm. every every show, <clears throat> every show, what I do is this. I have this game I play, and it's real simple. The fans love it. Everyone loves it. It's called Team With, Feud With, or Fire. <laughs> simple concept. Yep. You can team with anyone in the industry. Now, you're not a professional wrestler, but that's fine, because you can team with anyone. You Tonight, you are a professional wrestler here on the podcast. You can team with anyone you want. You can feud with anyone you want, and you can fire anybody you want. No, no explanation needed, unless you want to give me one. Mm-hmm. So, team with, feud with, or fire. <laughs> yeah, I see you already have some thoughts in your head about what you want to do. <laughs> well, <laughs> I, I would say I would team with one of the hosts of a WrestleMania, but that might give me a lot of heat. <laughs> oh shit, Are you gonna team with Hogan? <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, I, I team. I, I mean, my team with would be the guy who uh, replaced him as my all-time favorite wrestler, and that's before the uh, comments was leaked, and that's Daniel Bryan. Um, okay. Yeah, I, I know we can make a lot of money together. I'm actually with you, Dan Brian, before the uh, amazing guy. Cool. I can imagine. Um, feud with. Hmm, that's a good word. I I think I would like to feud with the. You know, I'll feud with Cody. Oh, really? Yeah, I, I'll feud with Cody because I would call him out for nepotism. <laughs> <laughs> he gets all kind of problems. I, I would really draw heat and call Brandy out for that post she made on Instagram at the height of the uh, racial pandemic. <laughs> oh, see, look at you! <laughs> look at you, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. If you know, you, if you don't know, you don't need to know. But if you know, then you know. So I would do it in a respectful way and remind her <laughs> that that was, <laughs> I would do it in a respectful <laughs> way. Um, <laughs> and then I fired DJ Hyde. Wow. Okay. So, so look, I want an explanation. <laughs> I want an explanation. Why would you fire the man? I mean, you, you in Baltimore, I see ZW hood right there. Why, why, why are you going to fire him? Well, I used to be in, um, I used to work at WSU with, um, you know, shout out to my boy, Blake Thomas Blizz photography. He also was the booker for CZW. Well, oh. Oh, excuse me. Sorry. Booker for WSU. And mm-hmm. he, photography for czw and the thing was the biggest issue we had was dj always wanted to focus on czw and not put any focus on the girls to the point some of the wrestlers will go to him and say look why can't we have like they had to fight just to get him to invest to buy turnbuckles you know because if you look at some of the earlier stuff you yeah. see Say it was a CZW ring. Then slowly but surely, you finally start seeing the WSU ring skirts and the uh, the turnbuckles. But they had to fight for that, you know. Um, it's it's almost is is the is equally disgusting as watching the NCAA treat the men's uh, uh, players versus the women's players, the the WNBA bubble versus the NBA bubble. So that was the thing, um, you know, with him. Uh, he was always, I mean, I'm going to go ahead and say, he would say stuff like, I only book girls I want to fuck. <laughs> okay, so so before we go any further, shout out to my homeboy, Black G's, former season <laughs> world champion. Out, out to uh, Black G's. That's, that's the whole thing right there. G's and I, um, I shot some video of him and interviewed him years ago. That's He's the, my tag partner. <laughs> He's my tag partner. Also, it, it, uh, shout out to my girl, Alicia. Former WSU uh, female competitor. Yeah, Lefisto. see, yeah. shout out to Lefisto. Yeah, Lefisto. Um, you know, I, I I credit her with a lot. Uh, she was somebody who you. I mean, you talking about a true locker room leader. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I, right. I was so happy that she spoke out of all the unfortunate things that happened to her. Mm-hmm. Cause, you know, it's not cool. Not cool at all. Um. And I'm like, one. I will always advocate for women 
Um, because at the end of the day, they just want to wrestle. They love the business the same way we do. Why can't, of course, there's going to be an attraction. They get attracted to guys. We get attracted mm -hmm. to the ring. But you have to be respectful. Well, you know what? Let's let's do this, man. I had a conversation with Lufisto the other day. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm going to send this message. I'm going to send this video to her just because. And she feels like she hasn't contributed anything to professional wrestling. Uh, uh, she, she, I, mean, I don't mean to be disrespectful, but <laughs> when I say like, was she crazy? Like, is, I tell I, her, I'm like, you, you got what is wrong with you? <laughs> like, you let me tell you, girl, you've done this. You've done that. You've done so freaking much. I, so, literally, I literally listed off a list of things that I know for a fact that she did not. Before, long before I even got involved in backstage, where because I like I was the social media manager for WSU mm -hmm. for a bit. Long before that, my friend Brandon Guy introduced me to Lefisto through video, and he showed me the match that her and G's had. And this is like late two thousands. Um, he showed me the match, and he was like, "Man, you see her? Like, yo, she's the truth." And that's how I found yes. out who she was. Um, first time I met her was WrestleCon two thousand thirteen, the very first WrestleCon um, at. You know, it was the Shimmer Show. Um, but, yeah, I mean, you, you, just somebody that I enjoy working with backstage at WSU because it's like, hey, we need to get some quick pictures for social media. We need to get some footage for social media. And and that was the best part about working with those ladies. I mean, you're talking Chrissy Rivera, um, Mercedes Martinez, Mia Yim, Leva Bates, Allie. Mm -hmm. uh, at the time, a young Britt Baker, a young Kiara Hogan, uh, a young Pr Priscilla Kelly, Sue Young. I mean, the list goes on and on. I mean, even down to even, um, you know, Eddie McQueen. So, uh, um, you know, to see with Lefisto, you know, just seeing her in that locker room, working with those ladies and just helping them, you know, um, you know, I watched her, you know, her Renee Michelle had a program together. So yeah, you know, she's a she's a legend, and and I would just wish that, I wish that she was appreciated more, that she wouldn't have to feel that way, but. It, you know, I, I definitely appreciate that, her. And I'm not just saying this because I know she's going to see this. But, you know, I've always appreciated <laughs> her for all the work that she's done, even before I got a chance to really, you know, meet her backstage. Well, I'll tell you, man, Jen, she's a cool chick. And uh, for me. But DJ still getting fired. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was going to say uh, for me, the stuff that went down with her and a lot of other women totally ruined it for, you know, for a lot of like legit good guys in this business you know um i hate that whole thing it's like the whole joy ryan thing mm -hmm. you know um like i've known joy ryan for a long time and then the shit went down with that and i'm like wow but you know i will tell you that speak out movement list a lot of the names on the list and a lot of things that they were they were you know put on the list were about you know it's it, it all sucks let's just get that out of the way it all sucks Mm -hmm. But then there are some people on the list that really shouldn't have been on the list. But then there are people that weren't on the list that should be on the list. Mm -hmm. Pedophiles running wrestling companies in North Dakota. You know, uh, just <sighs> shit like that. Pedophiles running wrestling companies in Baltimore, Maryland, yeah. Maryland or Glen Burnie, Maryland. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, former the, WWE superstar. Is uh, it turned into uh, the shooting hour here? Or <laughs> <laughs> we can go ahead and drop some names. We can put some people on notice. I mean, I'm just saying. Um, I, know, I, I feel like when people use loopholes and stuff, loopholes yeah. and laws, you know, somebody who has, you know, a couple of dreams at night, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know loophole, like, like, come on, y'all. Like, it, you shouldn't be doing some of this stuff. Like, consensuality, consensuality. And look, Nobody ladies and gentlemen. Knows. I will tell you this right now. I, for one, can I can only speak for myself, but I can tell you this right now. If you're a man in this business, if you're a woman in this business and you're using your power, mm -hmm. your booking power, your whatever fucking power it is you have to convince men and women to sleep with you, you're a piece of shit and you're ruining the business for a lot of people. Yep. And, you know, some of those people need to be called out. And the whole speaking out movement, I'm glad it happened the way it did. Um, a lot of people it brought a lot of recognition to a lot of things. I have a 12 year old daughter, and you know, if any guy 
propositioned her the way some of these women are propositioned, they can catch me outside. <laughs> Just saying. Oh, man. man. But, you know, it is what it is, ladies and gentlemen. Um, we speak the truth here on the Round Table Pro Wrestling Podcast. And I am so glad that I had a chance to get you on the show, man. Man, I and, appreciate it. This has been so much fun. We gotta we gotta collaborate, man. Let's do a let's do this. You know, my buddies at Russell Talk, they do a uh, predictions show. Okay. For pay per views. So how about the Roundtable Pro Wrestling Podcast and the Russell Realm do a prediction show? Brand warfare. Okay, let's see. I mean, I'll get with Dwayne, figure out sometimes. You know, you do the same thing and we can make yeah. it. We can uh we can sit down, we can put together a nice little little show. We can stream it live on Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, wherever you want to do it. And uh let's do this, man. Let's let's put together a show. Let's run a show. And let's do donations. And for every dollar we get, we'll donate that to a charitable cause like you know, something, you know, a women's battle shelter or, you know, Black Lives Matter. Something right. like some of you, something like something you want to do? All right, ladies and gentlemen, you heard it here first. Thank you very much for joining us here, Brian, man. Thank you for joining us on the Roundtable Pro Wrestling Podcast. You always have a seat here at the table, man. I appreciate it. Now, ladies and gentlemen, if you want to support the channel, it's real simple or easy. You can go to Anchor FM and you can go to the Roundtable Podcast backslash support. Support the channel. Support everyone involved with the independent wrestling. You can now find us on Twitter as well. Twitter, the Roundtable Pro Wrestling Podcast. And if you want to watch this on television, simple. Xfinity TV, Portland area. Monday nights, 10 p.m. Tuesday nights, 10 p.m. Wednesday nights, 9 p.m. Channel 23, Channel 22, and Channel 11. You can find us on Twitch. You can find us on YouTube. You can find us on Spotify, you can find us on Google, you can find us on anything, any place, anywhere you can find your podcast stations, you can find us live, the Roundtable Pro Wrestling Podcast, man, we are here live every Wednesday night, and this Wednesday we're going to be kicking it live with some MMA uh, legends, some professional wrestling legends, and we're just going to play a whole bunch of cool games, and we're going to get it in. Speaking of legends, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to have this guy uh, one more time show up on the show. The one and only James Beard. Hi, this is James Beard with SWE Fury, and you're watching the Roundtable Pro Wrestling Podcast. Drops by every time to drop that little dime. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been your boy, The Franchise. Thank you for joining us here on the Roundtable Pro Wrestling Podcast. Brian, thank you, sir. Thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs>